When you went on people's websites, what was your experience like? I'm a web designer, so I mean, I probably am the last person you want um, critiquing a website just because I look at things that I know the average person doesn't look at, but they weren't user-friendly sites. They either were like overly heavily designed and you were still searching to try to find the relevant information you needed. And then, you know, I'm digging all their Instagrams or Facebook pages, still just trying to find, you know, what your packages are. Like, where do you have a calendar anywhere that shows, you know, what your availability is? Are you, are you booked up? We document and share best practices around owning, operating, and managing world-class wedding venues. All right, guys, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming on the Venue RX, Jeff and Jesse. So nice to have you here. Appreciate Thanks for it. having us. Yeah, we're excited. I know. I know we got to connect for a while back, and uh, this has been a long time coming. So we're excited. Yeah, a hundred percent. I'm excited too. Uh, you have a company that I am really excited. I know, like you mentioned, we just really barely scratched the surface of, of uh, what you're working on. It's really exciting. And um, so I'd love to just kick it off with Venues Made Simple, which is your um, the business that you're working on right now. Can you talk us through what Venues Made Simple is? Absolutely. Go ahead. I'll, no, I, was gonna, I like Jeff to lay the groundwork and then I fill in the holes. So go for it. Yeah. So Venues Made Simple... Um, I, I'm going to start back with this with the story of where it was created. So we were supposed to get married in Italy. Uh, we were just going to do a small small wedding and destination, and said to the family, "Hey, if you want to come, you want to come to our wedding and celebrate. This is your vacation. You're coming over there. We'll have a time and a place. We'll set everything up for you. But then you're free to do whatever you want from there." Uh, and so Jesse. Uh, plan the wedding over there. And I say Jesse because I had nothing to do with it. I just kind of picked the place and she she ran with it. Um, and of course, uh, as all all uh, companies come out of a problem, uh, we were hit during COVID. And and so we replanned the wedding. At, at this point in time, the states weren't shut down. So we replanned it to uh, Georgia. And then uh, she planned it again and Georgia shut down. So we postponed the wedding, changed the location just because of uh, weather during the time of when we wanted to get married. Because we we always wanted to get married on us on the first. That's just kind of our our day. It didn't matter what month, but the first was kind of our date that we wanted to get married on. And so we moved it to Sedona, Arizona. And <laughs> so three different spots, cool spots. Ended up getting married off the side of a trail. But throughout that entire process, we realized. And I say we. Jesse brought brought this up to up to me that she goes this. There's no technology really in the in the wedding industry, and there's no way to actually get a hold of these venues and actually figure out if they have our data. Because we weren't this elaborate wedding. We weren't this you know multi million dollar wedding that the is the the ultra weddings I think they call them. We were on the lower tier tier where we just wanted to go and celebrate with our family and just have a have a good time on a on a budget. I guess you could say. So from there, we started diving into it and uh, Benny's Made Simple was born. And the idea of it is to have the marketing front end uh, for the venues, but then on the back end have kind of what Airbnb did in, in the hotel and, and housing rental industry and create a calendar. And so that calendar integrates with the venues. And so engaged couples can come on, see the platform, see the venue. We'll eventually have a 3D model for destination wedding so the engaged couple can walk through it in uh in virtual reality i guess you could say and especially with this ai boom uh i'll throw a couple of those buzzwords in there but uh they can see the availability and the cost of it and then request a book from there got it so yeah. really a lead generation and sorry to cut you off jenny uh, jesse but uh a lead it's it sounds like how you're building it right now is really a lead generation platform for the venue and then for the couple, it's a way to access, a, a cleanly access the venue. Exactly. Yeah. Really just kind of when planning the wedding, there just wasn't, there were so many question marks everywhere. I, I felt like I was, um, couldn't find the, the answers to the questions I had anywhere on the venue's website, you know, using different like wedding wire than not. Like it was just kind of this mass directory of, you know, a bunch of different names of places, but then you still had to do the digging to find out, you know, what does this actually cost? What, what do their packages look like? Um, yeah, do they have our date available? Because we kind of had a specific date or dates that we were looking at. 
Um, and it just blew my mind that there was not something out there because it wasn't like we're, you know, we're not trying to do something crazy here. We're just trying to see, you know, what um, what dates were available and what the prices were for those dates to get married. Like something that everyone's doing right now. And it just there wasn't anything out there. When you went on people's websites, what was your experience like? Um, and and I and I'm curious about that because the places, the three places that you mentioned, Jeff, <laughs> you mentioned Italy, then you mentioned Georgia, then you mentioned Sedona, Arizona. I mean, those are like you went west hard across the globe. <laughs> um, <laughs> what were, were what was your experience? Kind of as you were looking at some of the websites, what things were you seeing that kind of made this pain point really evident? Well, I'm a web designer. So I mean, I probably am the last person you want um, critiquing a website just because I look at things that I know the average person doesn't look at. But I mean, just poorly, um, they weren't user friendly sites, they either were like, overly heavily designed, and you were still searching to try to find the relevant information you needed. Or they look like it was thrown up in like a couple hours in an afternoon and had like nothing on there. And you know, the opposite problem. Um, and then, you know, I'm digging all their Instagrams or Facebook pages, still just trying to find, you know, can someone just give me like what your packages are? Like, where do you have a calendar anywhere that shows, you know, what your availability is? Are you, are you booked up? Like, cause we were planning kind of last minute once we moved over to the States, like, and, and in COVID I was like, you know, are you, do you have anything available in a month or two? I know we were definitely not the traditional wedding, but there are so many non-traditional weddings happening now um especially since covid we were kind of ahead of the curve with that um but you know people are not doing the you know i i got engaged now i'm getting married in a year a year and a half you know they're they're doing shorter time frames they're having shorter engagement times so being able to have that kind of inside look at um a venue's calendar and their pricing and just kind of creating all around transparency in the wedding industry we just found was not is not was not is not being done I'm I'm curious from your vantage point, why is that? Well, okay, so <laughs> I have a couple of thoughts. Um, when, you know, we, we were planning a wedding, but when I said, oh, no, it's more of just, you know, a gathering where, you know, vow renewal, we're celebrating our love. Uh, suddenly the price has changed. You know, we were having a... Um, anniversary party we got a completely different price from a venue than we did if we were having a wedding with the exact same amount of people exact same time frame all that so i don't know if it's you know venues wanting to you know price per couple you know based on what they you know what who they see come in the door or like i don't i don't know for sure um some venues are totally on board they're like yep we have no problem listing our prices and showing our availability like we're an open book um, and those are the types of venues we want to work with. But there are for sure some venues we've encountered that, you know, are a little bit like, well, who's asking? Like, what's, you know, we'll tell you the price, but who's asking? Like, you know, what, what what's the event? Um, it shouldn't really matter if it's the exact, you know, if it's 20 people or 50 people there. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a, a birthday party or a wedding, in my opinion. Yeah. And, and Jonathan, I think you understand as well, especially with your businesses of weddings are a little bit more of uh, a lift, right? But the lift side of, the, of it isn't the location. It's, hey, the alcohol portion, it's the food portion, it's the photography behind it, it's the actual coordination of the ceremony, it's all, all of that. So what we're trying to bring is the transparency of what does this location cost because it's a gorgeous venue, and then you're able to dive deeper into the pricing after that. And I, I think that's going to really help with those engaged couples because they might go, oh, it's an all-inclusive price for $15,000, $20,000, you name it, depending on your area. But what does that all-inclusive mean? Are they going to start upcharging them? Are they So when we're breaking it down all the way down to just the location, just for the space, that venue can feel comfortable with, hey, here, here's this. Now now the party happens. Now we can start layering the other other pieces on top of it. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm curious. So so we currently manage five venues in the Southern California area, and we have done staffing for venues for eight years before that, pretty much at a variety of venues, both all-inclusive venues and blank canvas venues. Um, but primarily we've worked at blank canvas venues because 
those are the venues that don't have the staffing. They're not kind of like all-inclusive. And to your point, Jeff, totally. There's this labor lift that happens from a a perspective of, yeah, buying, you know, doing a bar package for 100 people is different than a bar package for 20 people, I guess, depending on who your 20 people are. <laughs> um, but one of the things that I that I know makes a huge difference is like the hours of access. And when you're thinking about labor, you're thinking, do you have to have two eight-hour shifts? Do you have to have two six-hour shifts? You know, are you going to run into overtime? Like there are some of these different things. Um, but it's interesting to me hearing you say that because I feel like there's this difference between the all-inclusive model, which has really been championed by other management companies, um, you know, Wedgwood, Walters, um, there's companies out of Florida, and there are different smaller companies around the country, certainly, that want to package everything in because they want to squeeze as much out uh, as they can from the event on the finance side, but then on the practicality side also, they don't want to have, you know, random DJs showing up at random catering companies and things like that. And so they do bury the price. What is the, to me, this kind of is at odds with your model because you're, to your point, you're looking for the price transparency and the, tr- and the price, the true price of the venue is like hidden deep down in that overall package. Is your offering really more for blank canvas venues than all-inclusive venues or do all-inclusive venues have a place on this platform as well there's there's certainly a place place for it i mean we're not gonna we're not gonna turn down anybody because it's really how how you market yourself and you can still have your price on our platform and show that and then in the description you would just say hey this is all inclusive here's what the all inclusive means with that being said though during our with the filters as engaged couples are searching you might get something different on there so they they might not fall into your budget but maybe that's not the engaged couples that you're you're looking for which leads me to my my next point about what we're trying to do is with other marketing platforms it's usually the engaged couple signs on their emails already populated their names already populated and then they can go down the list of all the different venues or different vendors and go i want more information i want more information so our venues are getting inundated with leads Amazing, right? Well, now try and reach out to them, trying to convert those leads. Okay, well, the tra- the conversion ratio is usually under 1% of the leads that actually come in. And then you have to think about all the time that was put into following up on those empty leads that really just wanted to go, oh, do you have my date available? Do you fall within my pricing? And then just see the list of everything, all their questions right then. Mm-hmm. Another item with that is you mentioned that you don't some some venues don't want to have random DJs or random photographers because as you know, if an engaged couple or somebody at the party has a bad time, who's gonna get the bad review? It's the venues. So we we do put in our system that they have preferred partners. And those preferred partners, they can list them, hey, here's the DJs that we prefer, here's the caterers that we prefer. So that they know that they're going to get the best experience and they're not going to get a bad review. They're going to show up on time and they're trusted. And that trust, you're bringing those partners leads as well. And so then there, there's a whole system that comes into place that that creates that family partnership to make sure that that engaged couple's experience is, is top notch. That's awesome. I We jump right into Venues Made Simple kind of after hearing your your personal story and your journey through getting married and through COVID and everything. But uh, what are your backgrounds? Jesse, I know you said you're a web designer. Um, where, where do you guys, like, how did you meet the wedding industry? Yeah, um, well, we kind of fell into it. Um, I, I was a web designer before my maternity leave. Um, I was a web designer at Essence of Australia, um, so an international bridal company. So I was kind of in the wedding industry in, in that sense, um, wedding dresses, that is. Um, but really, it was just the struggle that we went through planning our own wedding kind of is what drove, you know, this business idea. Um, and that's kind of, you know, where we we were really passionate about helping other couples who were in our shoes. Um, and then along this journey, we, you know, obviously are meeting with tons of venue owners and we really like, you know, the operational like venue side of things as well. Now going from like the, you know, consumer to the, you know, business side of things. So 
we honestly fell into it, but you can give your background too. Yeah, mine's, I just I do technology sales, so I I run a portfolio of maybe fifteen companies and about thirty million dollars of sales a, a year in that portfolio and trying to grow and expand it for that technology. And I think that came into play with the entrepreneurism because yes, I'm representing a business on the sales side, but I'm also owning my own business and making sure that every little aspect is is done right. And that's where the entrepreneur side came in. Jesse's always been an entrepreneur with her her web design and taking one-off jobs and stepping into this as our CEO. She's been absolutely amazing. And uh, one one cool thing that we got to do when we first met in college was work together at a bar. So I was a I was a door guy and she was the bartender and uh, just the, the the rest is history. But we actually got to see how we work together with it because not a lot of couples can do that because there there are hard times and we've really truly learned how to communicate together and learn essentially our, our lanes and then making sure that if it falls in her her lane and I disagree with it, letting her run with that and it's it succeeding or making mistakes. And then we, when we come back and review it and then same on the, my side, Hey, I'm wanting to do this. And she goes, Hey, that's your lane. You go ahead and head and do that. If you feel super strongly about it. And again, you make mistakes, you learn, and then coming back and you be able to communicate about it. I think that's really stepping up and uh for all the audience that's that's in here it, it's hard it's hard to do it as a as a family as a couple as a married couple with a, a young son and hopefully more kids on the way but the the aspect of what it builds for our family is is huge and i encourage it left and right it's it's amazing it's an amazing opportunity i i think that's really neat to hear hear you guys say that it's funny i was talking to a venue owner uh who comes from you know, 30 plus years of experience in her own right, but then about a hundred years actually in the hospitality industry with her family. I mean, it's something three generations now have been passed down. And it was, it was interesting. She was talking about working with family. And I think there are certainly some unique challenges, but huge advantages, Jeff, like you said, the question that I have for you guys is, and because my wife and I work together as well. Um, the question I have for you guys is when you do come across those those issues, not maybe the small issues, not, you know, like, oh, I disagree, like, you know, about a font or something. And, you know, Jeff, you're going to agree with Jesse, right? Because she's a web designer and, you know, you know, you have the skills and things like that, but about business development choices and things like that, that you both are stakeholders in as far as how the company moves forward. Do you have a process or, or a system that you use around solving it and, and kind of saying, hey, look, this is going to affect both of us. Yeah, I know you're the CEO. Maybe I'm the CEO. Like whatever your positions are, but there are decisions that you have to make together. So how do you how do you handle that without letting that get too crazy or cross over into your personal life as well? Because I know they're so joined, you know, so tightly joined. Yeah, and you should come to some of our family dinners. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it gets heated sometimes. No, um, it it is it's hard i don't have like a perfect answer because we're still figuring it out um we definitely could probably um use some processes to actually like resort to when we are kind of disagreeing on things but it really has been like jeff mentioned just kind of we try to stay in our lanes as much as possible and really just kind of talking things out i mean a good old pros and cons list never hurt anybody like that's you know always been helpful but um, I don't, I don't think we mentioned this, but it's, so Jeff is still working his full-time job. And after maternity leave, um, I didn't go back to my job. So my job now is working on the businesses and, and being a full-time mom too. Um, so I think that's also helped a little bit in the transition of kind of making those decisions because I am the one that's in it a hundred percent of the time, whereas Jeff's not in it just as much as I am. So I think I don't know. That gives me an extra vote, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, and then and then leaning on our community, right? Whether whether it's our parents for advice, um, you know, we have other business owners in the family that that we lean on. We have a ton of mentors that we we lean on, and if it's something that you know, maybe maybe I'm struggling how to communicate something, I'll reach out to one of my mentors who's a who's a female, and I, and I say, hey, you know as a female, because 
how would I communicate this to my wife? How would your husband communicate it to you? And then vice versa, she's leaned on on her mentors as well to communicate with me because sometimes I can be a little stubborn or, or headstrong. And so it's just really stepping back and then knowing that working with each other, it's we're not disagreeing with each other. We want what's best for us and and best for the business and what's best for our, everybody uh, that's in the business. And we really don't disagree very much on like the big picture stuff. It's funny you mentioned like font because that is kind of the stuff that we would like disagree on. Jeff would be like, no, that's too, you know, thin and delicate. I'm like, no, it's perfect. So <laughs> that's that's the kind of like small little stupid disagreements that we'll have. Really not the big um the big picture stuff or just, you know, the the direction the company's heading in. We seem to be pretty good and aligned most times on that kind of stuff. That's very cool. Very cool. Jesse, you kind of let it slip a little bit. You said businesses. What other, I, and I have a sneak peek, but I want, I'm curious just to let talk, talk to the audience say you're a little bit diversified in the, the event space, the venue space, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in, in kind of developing venues being simple, we're having tons of conversations with venues um, in the Kansas City area. And we we actually met this really cool couple who um, run a couple different venues in Kansas City. Um, they had moved from the West Coast a couple years back, and over on the West Coast, it was super popular at events and um, venues to have like little vignettes, like just these style lounge seating areas. Um, and so, this gentleman he started collecting like all his furniture. He was like, you know, I'm gonna open this like rental business when I come back to Kansas City. Well. He ended up kind of just getting heavily involved in um, the venue management side of things. And he had all this luxury furniture sitting in storage. He was like, I need to do something. You know, I want to get this business off the ground, this idea that he had. And um, and we actually, we, we met him, you know, and talking about Venues Made Simple stuff. And then like six months later, he, um, like his venues are on Venues Made Simple. So we, you know, been in communication with him. And like six months after we had initially met with him, he was like, so I really like you guys and I like where your head's at. You guys are like a cool couple. You're you're doing things. You got a good work ethic, all this stuff. And he was like, I think we should start this business. And I'm like five, six months pregnant at the time. And I'm like, I really don't need anything else on my plate right now. <laughs> I said yes. <laughs> but we just kind of kept talking about it. And we were like, okay, we see, you know, the benefit in this. And it just, it works. You know, we're, we're in the wedding space. We're we have all these great relationships with venues that so were, um, you know, kind of good on that front. Uh, we've been, you know, mingling and getting to know a bunch of different wedding planners. So, I mean, we're just so inundated in like the wedding industry in Kansas City. It's nuts. Um, but that's kind of how that business got rolling. So, like, I think less than a month before I had my son, we uh, like officially launched that website. Um, and it was, you know, in the off season for weddings. So it was nice because it was a little slow and we were doing, you know, some styled shoots, just kind of getting things. I think the week week that he was born, we had our first rental. It was, yeah. So it was, yeah, it was fun. So um, that's, uh, I, I don't think she mentioned the business name for that. So that's uh, yours truly event rentals. And Jesse has taken the helm on that uh, with the guidance of, of the partner, which whom I, I believe, you know, he, he actually yeah. introduced us the other. And so, uh, it, I, was that's gonna, been, I was gonna say he and just for everyone on the show a little bit of like show trivia maybe or a little easter egg so tim tim wyrick uh started he was initially involved in a to a venues then transitioned to to kansas city started now skyline venues but in the process of that he and i we used to do staffing at a lot of the a to a properties but he and i never actually met Actually, to this day, we've never actually met in person, but we've talked so much, like so much. And, and it was like through COVID and we were kind of complaining about the lack of education. And I was like, let's do a podcast together. And so, yeah, he was on the first, like if you look back at some of the first couple of shows, uh, yeah, he was co-host and then he bowed out, you know, I think four or five shows in and, um, and it's really cool to see him kind of get back into the venue space because I know at the time he was not happy i don't think with the, with the venue space but um i'm i'm so it's so cool to have seen his brand you know kind of pop again and and uh he's really talented so yeah it was cool to to meet you guys through him and to hear that you know you're working together he it's is so talented big shout out to tim he's he's an awesome mentor for us and um 
yeah, he's just awesome. And that is wife Louise. I oh mean, yeah, we love. I mean, Louise. <laughs> she's. It's funny because he's like seven foot ten, and then Louise is like five foot. So the difference between them, no, it's it's not that <laughs> exa- exaggerated, but uh, it, they're just an amazing couple that saw what Jesse and I had uh, and the work ethic that we had, and it's, it's those those extra people that put the extra time in you. Um, and, and by no means is he not benefiting from it because we, we are a partner on the, on the other business, but he has dedicated his time to us to help guide us through this process. And we have been able to apply certain principles and certain things that we learned to the other businesses that we built. So, awesome. so cool. I, I'm trying to get Tim to come back on and like get guest host an episode, but I know he's, you know, he's a cool guy and he's busy now, Tim, when you listen to this. Got to come back on, man. <laughs> um, but so very neat. You have these two different businesses. I think it's interesting. You have one business of any made simple. That's kind of the the top of the funnel. And then you have the rental business, which is almost like not quite the bottom of the funnel, but pretty close because you're, you know, doing the, the um, you know, rental supply and talk to me a little bit more about that. You know, are you delivering those? Like, do you have crews of people who are setting up and tearing down and you know what is what is the practicality of owning that business look like we're still figuring that out uh so it's it's still very it's very new um we we are like officially launched late november um and so we this has been like our first little you know heavy wedding wedding season um so we're still trying to figure out all those like, like kinks if you will um we we actually have a surprising amount of rentals um, booked that we kind of thought we would just for how new we are. Um, and so we haven't, Jeff and I were just kind of like, oh, we'll take, you know, the first couple of rentals, you know, kind of see what it's all about. Like, you know, just make sure it's being done right. You know, we, reputation's huge. We want to make sure that, you know, we're representing the brand well. And well, and then that's kind of where we stopped. We haven't really hired someone since. And then we're like, okay, crap, we have all these <laughs> rentals that we're doing, the two of us with a uh, six month old in tote. Um, so we actually, we, we need to hire, um, that's on a to-do list is to definitely hire someone to, um, help us do those rentals on the weekends. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh, and it's not just the weekends and it's, it's usually, yeah. it's kind of fun cause we get to, we do get to bring our son Bo along and it's kind of like her and I drive in and we have the truck and the trailer and, you know, she goes and talks with all the, the venue She'll help me carry a little bit of the furniture, but I do the talking portion so that he can <laughs> lift the heavy stuff. So I'm busy. Yeah. And uh and hanging out with Bo. And he it's cool to see that our our son, I mean, he's almost seven months old now, but he's in the business with us already. He's meeting everybody, he's interacting and as a seven month old. And so just getting to do that as a family. And then those those drives to the venues are um are are amazing as well, just because our mind starts to flow. And the the cool thing with it is is um, we we'll be talking or if we don't have anything to talk about we'll throw on a book like we'll, we'll and then we'll end up pausing the book ten minutes in and go did you hear what he just said there how can we apply that to this and um, it's it's fun because we are so busy but everybody I feel like other families are are busy you know you, you mentioned doing sports and and we're not quite at that stage by by all means I, I, we want our son and, and kids to join sports we think that's huge but we're at the stage in our life where we can take him along and then we get to be a family and then work on something that can be generational yeah that generational piece is huge and just building something I think with any job you know you want to make as much as you can and make a difference and make an impact and things like that. But it's really neat when you're building into something that is not just a, a nest egg for retirement, but it's also, you know, something that you're able to leave your mark on an industry with. And so that, yeah, that hundred percent resonates. I'm, I'm curious between the two of you, what are your roles in the business? Jesse, you said, you know, you're the, the CEO and Jeff, and you said you're also the one who is doing some of the relationship building, you know, and, and then Jeff's doing the setup. Um, what how do you how do you decide how you're going to divide labor we are still figuring that out <laughs> are you talking about yours truly or event news made simple or, or well for i for either one i mean i'm and maybe i should ask it more clearly i mean are you are the two of you 
Jesse, are you more outgoing and social? And so you're, you know, the ones who who's kind of developing the relationships. Uh, Jeff, you know, are you more of an ops guy? Or are you more of the front runner, the social extrovert side of it? Like you do have to have that yin and yang. So I'm just wondering, um, you know, how you both show up for w- regardless of the business, like where you you both are showing up. So I'm definitely the the outgoing one. Um, I I I bring people in, and then Jesse keeps them there. So I'm always out there, just like t- touch it and grab it, and and bringing people into our, our little circle. And I'm just like, cool, you're 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 with the family now. Here here's Jesse. I'm gonna go find another one to bring into the family there. Uh, but then on the on the business portion and on the sales sales portion, so I I kind of help develop the sales side, the the business strategy, the the. Uh, my degree is in mechanical engineering. So there's a little bit of an operations portion to that, but being a mechanical engineer, I'm not very detail oriented. I'm more big picture. And so I kind of work on the big picture and, and see where all the shiny stars are. And then I bring all the, all these big shiny ideas to Jesse. And then she kind of works on them on a more detailed front and then uh, really make sure the operations are, are going to work from there. And then especially with her background being on the marketing front. I mean, she has just a crazy eye for the marketing. And I, I do want to give a, a shout out to her her third business here um, by, by Jesse Jane is uh, her web design business that she helps uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, she really loves focusing on women entrepreneurs. I apologize, I'm speaking for you, but... Uh, building them their brands from the ground up and their websites from the ground up or complete redesigns to make sure that these entrepreneurs and especially the women entrepreneurs or, or venues specifically their brands being represented like they should be because i mean you you talked about the top of the funnel type with venues made simple we'll reach out to some venues and their interaction for to reach out to them or their branding or it just it's not painting a picture that an engaged couple would want to go and 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 show their love for each other at and so oh, graciously we we try to talk to them about, about that as well and sometimes that helps bring in those those marketing leads for it yeah um now I, that was a lot <laughs> yeah sorry i right, just <laughs> um nobody talked about just kind of big picture and like jeff comes up with some outlandish ideas and you know i'm i'm pulling the reins in and just trying to you know i i help us definitely figure out what the next best step is um he's you know a good dreamer and likes to you know pull in all these different ideas and then yeah i kind of help with you know what what's the next step we're going to take and actually you know action items to actually move forward and not just be kind of you know in a dream state totally yeah that's that's the dynamic with my wife and i as well. And I've tried to, I think over the years I've tried to be, I've needed to be more practical and more like, you know, operational as well, just because, you know, she's, we have, there's just a lot going on. So yeah, having that person who's able to kind of interpret the dreams, you know, Gino Wickman and Mark Winters talk about it in, in rocket fuel, you know, having the the visionary and then the integrator. Right. Um, so that's huge. I'm, I want to get back to Vinny's Made Simple really quick. What is your vision for the future on that? How do you see it growing? You know, what, what do you hope, uh, how do you hope to see it grow over the next, you know, two, three, five years? Yeah. Um, this year and, and probably a good portion of next will be like a lot of strong growth in the Kansas City area. Um, we just have, you know, a model we need to prove and Kansas City is the best place for us to do it, especially with all the relationships we've been building. Um, but then we definitely plan to expand from there, probably hitting the next bigger cities kind of around us, St. Louis, Columbia, Springfield, Topeka, you know, and then um, going from there. I mean, we want it to be nationwide. I think there's a need for it um, across the states. And I think it would help, especially with Jeff barely touched on in a little bit earlier, destination wedding planning, um, being able to add in our 3D modeling that um, will be in a a, a new phase of development in here soon, I'm sure, um, because that was an important aspect for us uh, in our journey um, with playing a wedding was, you know, something that wasn't in the city we lived. And so we feel like that's definitely an important aspect um, to have on the site as well. Yeah, I think a, I think a unique portion of what we're doing, uh, and this has gone through iteration after iteration. Uh, and so we went and 
pitched to a, a grant where it's essentially like a, a VC f- fund. <laughs> and so it's like Shark Tank, you come in and they're asking, you know, your market growth, your market strategy, uh, all the details of pitching your business to them. And then they decide whether or not you get the grant and they really push to go towards VC funding. And we were going that direction because we were going to do a subscription model on the site. So to be on our, our platform, you you pay a monthly fee and then you get the elites that you want. What we actually flipped to, which will, will help us in the long run, it's going to hurt us in the short term because we're not going to have the capital uh, up front, but it is more of a commission-based model. And that way, the venues that are on our platform are getting rewarded when we do our job versus just paying a monthly fee and they might not be getting what they need. So we're just going to be setting them leads. And then if they book those leads, it's not even if they get the leads, if they book those leads, that's when we're going to be taking a, a small commission portion from it. So it's a it's a win-win. Hey, if your marketing dollars for venues made simple goes up, that means you book more business. But it's not that set. I mean, goodness, I've heard of venues paying for one one platform to be on two, three thousand dollars a month. So they're spending, you know, twenty six, thirty thousand dollars a year just to be on a marketing platform and not sure if they get the leads or not. Or it might be just we're getting tons of leads that we're getting not, they're not good leads and wasting essentially wasting their time. Yeah. Yeah. We actually uh, a couple of our venues said that they save uh if they if we were able to build up essentially their business just on our platform. They would save over a week a month. Uh, so f- over 40 hours every single month in reach out time. So as you know, as a venue operator, a lot of these owners are mom and pop shops and they might not have everything perfect and they're working a hundred to 110 hours a week and they, they live and breathe their business. And we're trying to take, take a little bit of that time away from them. And so they can, focus on their families or focus on maybe growing their business in a different source. So I'm curious, how are you, um, how are you acquiring clients and then how are you acquiring eyeballs? Cause that's, I mean, you're, you're getting the clients in, so you're getting the venues in and obviously, you know, venues are going to hear about this on, on this show, the menu RX. So that would be a, a way they're coming in, but I'm curious kind of on both those approaches, what are you doing to get venues on the platform? And then what are you doing when, um, a venue is on the platform to actually get clients directed to them. So we are launching officially launching uh, next month, and so the, you could get on the on the site. You can you can see it, but it wasn't uh, tightened up to I guess you could say. So we were still fixing some calendars. Some some of the venues utilize HoneyBook. Some of them use Gmail. So we were diving in on how to integrate those calendars perfectly we've we've ironed that out and so we're officially starting to push next month uh and, and so for the venue side of that that's kind of the helm that i've taken and that's just calling them uh building relationships showing them the roi of what what actually can be the return on it and it's essentially zero lift for them they just have to send us photos we onboard them there is a small onboarding fee, but it's it's nothing compared to what you would pay on a monthly fee <laughs> elsewhere, uh, and and then just word of mouth from there. On the engaged st- couple side, uh, it's strictly the the marketing front, building the brand, uh, building the social media presence, and then uh, we we will dive into the paid advertising portion of it, and that's that's actually our next step with it. Yeah, we've been talking to some marketing companies, um, local KC companies, and seeing kind of what we need to do to put together kind of a marketing strategy. Um, we don't, we're not in the world of paid ads and things like that. Um, we're not content writers or creators necessarily. So, I mean, we're definitely going to um, look to get some assistance in that area. Um, but that's, yeah, kind of next steps. And the uh, another cool thing that we're doing is that, again, with that that hourly that these venues are, are working way too much, a lot of them also take care of their own social media as well. And they're spending, you know, <laughs> it's a full-time job essentially. And we've streamlined those processes. So we've actually started onboarding clients to help with their marketing. And then in turn, as we're reaching, pushing those, we at Venues Made Simple, they're on our site. So then we can repost or put repost their stories or, you know, 
be able to drive engagement that way. So not only are they getting the eyeballs from their their push, but then as we repost, we'll get their eyeballs and then continue beyond that. Mm-hmm. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, a lot of crude benefit coming from kind of both sides being able to utilize the content that's coming out. Exactly. Yep. Awesome. Exactly. Very, very cool. Well, you guys, it has, I'm um, like, didn't even feel like it was very long, but we're already at, we're already at our time for today. Um, it has literally been so fun getting to meet you, uh, it, you know, putting a face to the name, obviously, and uh, hearing about your story, just kind of the way you started. I think it's, it's really neat that you guys work together and I'm excited to um, just continue watching you guys grow, growing your brands and your family, like you mentioned. Um, if people are wanting to check out Venues Made Simple and maybe they're a venue and they want to get on, uh, can is this something they can join now or they can reach out to you? And if so, what's the best way to do that? They can go on the website and just create an account that that's you're able to do that right now. Um, it's free to get on there. Um, you can obviously send us an email. It's Jeff or Jesse at VenuesMadeSimple.com. Um, and we can either help onboard you uh, if you're needing you know, some assistance with that, or it's a very user-friendly process to um, onboard yourself. Um, very quick and easy. It's like setting up your own like social media. It's kind of fun. Um, so yeah, we, we're definitely able to help venues get get onboarded or they, they can go on and do it themselves. Yeah. And and really um, for, for the listeners, for the people that are out there, uh, even if you're not a venue, reach out to us. We, we would love to talk to you. We, we want to engage with the community if you have ideas uh, that you want to bring to life, we're we're here to help with that as well. The I, and then on the venue side, there there really is no, how can I say this downside to to the onboarding of, of the site because uh, there's true, no risk. There's literally yeah, free. and and with I mean with Je- Jesse's marketing side of things, it's not like your brand is going to be badly represented. It's actually going to be excelled and just that whole portion of it there's no there's no risk so come on on board uh again there there's no fee except the onboarding fee that is tiny it's just to make sure that a couple of things that we have to come out of pocket with are, are covered and uh and then it's off to the races so even though we are promoting here in kansas city i mean we have goodness probably a dozen of our friends and, and then plus one including us that we're in Kansas City. We were looking in, in Kansas City, but then they might say, hey, I want to go out to Southern California and they, your venue would be on there and it'd be the only one or a couple of the only ones on there. So you get fresh eyes um, there. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. I love it. I think it's a great opportunity for for venues and it uh, seems like a really cool thing you guys are building. So I'm excited to to keep tracking with you and um, and future looks bright for you guys. Well, it's awesome. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you for having us. We yeah. appreciate you and the, the rest of the team. Yep. Yeah, definitely. You got it. Talk to you guys soon. All right. Bye.